We flooded a basement. Or did we? Before we get started, let's go ahead and roll the ad. It's only 15 seconds long, so stick around. We're gonna break it down in just a second. All right, cool. Well, I hope you liked it. Uh, that was a 15 second spot that we made that's actually a part of a bigger campaign. And we did a video on uh, another one of those videos in that campaign not too long ago. So I'll link that video right here. You can go ahead and check it out. But today we're talking about this ad. So let's go ahead and break it down. When we were in the pre-production phase for this video, we really talked about a lot of different ideas as to how we wanted to go about flooding this basement. We talked about visual effects. We talked about uh, shooting it in camera by doing some sort of forced perspective fish tank gag where we were going to have a fish tank really close to the lens. That one didn't get very far. We also talked about um, avoiding the water altogether, just going ahead and relying on sound design, the splish splash of water in the basement, and then also playing around with uh, reflected light and just avoiding the water effect altogether. I'm glad we didn't go that route. I really don't think it would have been as effective. There may have even been some kind of confusion about what was going on. So with all these ideas on the table, we obviously had to select one. You might be able to guess what we did. Let's talk about it. So we started by dumping 4,500 gallons of water into the basement. It was a huge undertaking and you probably aren't believing me right now. I'm just, okay, all right. You caught me, I was joking, but we actually did use a little bit of water uh, to pull off this effect. We did a combination of both practical and visual effects. And if I'm being honest, I think that's a really powerful combination right now. If you look into the film industry, the implementation of both CG and real practical effects uh, and merging them together is a really great way of pulling off special effects that I think audiences really appreciate. I think a really good example of a show right now that is doing a really great job balancing both is The Mandalorian. I think that Grogu, Baby Yoda, would not be half as lovable if he was a CG character all the time. Obviously there are times where there's some extreme movement that Grogu will do where he needs to be CG, but for the most part, he is an animatronic puppet. And then of course, what they're able to do with virtual backdrops, where they're blending a real foreground with a screen-based backdrop, they're doing a nice job balancing it out. So in our ad, we wanted to blend both practical with CG. Let's talk about the practical first. So we knew that we wanted our actress's foot to actually make contact with the water to kind of illustrate this moment of surprise, this rude awakening of, holy cow, my basement is flooded. This is, of course, the close-up shot where we did a practical effect. We actually had real water. But this staircase that you see in the shot is not the staircase that you see in any of the other shots. That staircase is actually in our shop. Um, we have a wood staircase. It's a pretty similar size. And we went to the hardware store, bought some similar carpet, um, and then we bought some bath board. We mashed that together. And all of a sudden we had a stunt double staircase. Now we had to come up with a way to create a uh, contained flooded basement. We talked about kind of buying one of those inflatable pools for a while, but what we ended up doing was using kind of more of the resources that we had. We took a speed rail frame. I think it was an eight by eight or maybe a six by six. We had that supported by low boys on either side. Then we went ahead and lined this speed rail frame with a durable plastic and we used grip clips to secure that. In order to match the lighting for this shot, it ended up being pretty simple because it was a close-up shot. All we really had to focus on was the direction of the light. So in the wide shot, we had that window that, that we were motivating from. So we basically just put our 300D Mark II as our key on the left-hand side of frame, shooting right in and that ended up looking, looking just fine. We didn't need to implement those other lights because it was so tight. The color grade ended up being pretty important for this shot. The uh, wall in the basement was a little bit more of a cream, so we had to color pick that with our close-up shot and shift that. So it was a little bit more cream, and then the carpet ended up being a little bit lighter. We had to make that a little bit darker. Another thing that we did to try to match the staircases as best we could uh, in camera was we dampened the carpet in the shop just to try to make it a little bit darker 
We did dial it in just a little bit more in the color grade, as I mentioned, but if you can make that one step just to make it a little bit closer to the final product in camera, I say go for it. That helped. Now um, for the wide shot. We had to call in the reinforcements for this one. Jacob over at InLight VFX uh, took care of this entire sequence for us, went above and beyond. We would not have been able to do this shot without him. So uh, kudos to him. We'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. If you haven't checked it out already, um, he's got some really cool stuff over there. He's, he's doing all kinds of tutorials on Blender 3D, making robots, putting holes in walls, compositing 3D objects, just really sweet stuff. So if you're trying to learn more about Blender 3D with CGI and you know visual effects, his channel is the place to be. So go check him out. I think he'll also be making a video about this particular ad with this effect. So if you want to know all the, all the details about that, um, we'll leave a link to that video as well once that comes out. So Keenan and Jacob, they jump on a video call together and Keenan is going, Hey Jacob, we need some help. We need you to flood a basement for us. Is that something you can tackle? And, and Jacob's going, Oh yeah, of course. That's kind of what I do. Making movie magic. So it was really as simple as that. I mean, and then the job was done. I mean, he totally knocked it out of the park. And you know, those, all those little objects floating around in the water, that bike, all, all fake, all 3D, all computer generated imagery but boy are we sure happy we got hooked up with jacob because he knocked it out of the park all right we're here here's the lighting breakdown section of the video um today we've got something a little bit different i've whipped up an overhead of of the scene kind of the lights that we're using and just kind of a general layout of where everything is just to give you a, a good idea i think the b-roll is helpful but also kind of seeing an overhead perspective is kind of nice um, for some people so i'll start by saying kind of the formula for this scene our lighting design really was motivating from the windows uh we i'd say we probably do this nine times out of ten if there is a visible window in the scene we're going to motivate from it we're going to put a light outside and try to make it look like the sun there's two reasons why we do this. Reason number one is it's just the most believable way to illuminate a room. When you walk into a space, more than likely, the windows are going to be the brightest light source in the room. So it just makes the most sense to illuminate from them. Um, and it's pretty. I think you can, you know, when sun's blasting through a window and it's bouncing off of surfaces, it makes for a pretty image. So that's reason number one. And reason number two is more of a practical one. It's just easier to put lights outside than having them in the room that you're shooting in. It's going to make it a lot more clean, a lot more organized, and it just makes shooting a lot easier because you're not having to frame out C-stands or lights. Um, it's just an easier way of shooting. All right, so back to the breakdown. Let's go ahead and start with the two fixtures at the top of the frame. Uh, these are two Aperture 300D Mark IIs, but they're doing two different things. This first fixture on the left here is being diffused with a frame of 250. That was used as our key source that uh, was shining on our actress. This was coming from upstage through the window. And then we had a second light going through that same window, but this one had a aperture spotlight mount attachment. This one was uh, more for atmosphere. We had a hazer going on in the room when we were shooting. And this one was all about getting that shaft of light um, through the window. So this brings us to our third and final light that we had outside. This was a 300D that we had just to, uh, just to kind of splash a little bit of light on some texture that we had on the staircase. We liked the way that looked. The right side of the frame was kind of falling into shadow a little bit too much. So we went ahead, added this light. I really liked the way that looks, so I'm glad we did that. So our fourth light, as you can see, is inside. Didn't really want to do it, but um, it is functioning kind of as a wraparound source. It's an extension of the key that we had outside. We just needed to fill in the shadows a little bit more. Had to be done, worked out just fine. We had the space to do it. So that's what that light was doing. And finally, we'll just talk about some of the modifiers that we had here. I know I talked about the diffusions, but we do have this uh, four x four floppy that we had outside. Um, we did have some natural sunlight that was starting to leak into the window a little bit. And of course this was going to change over time. So we just wanted to cut that all together so we could really shape the light how we wanted to. And finally, I'll talk about this. It's not on the overhead, but we did have to use a little bit of CTO on, uh, on a door that's not visible in the frame, but there was a door right at the top of the staircase here that had some windows that led to outside, had some natural light spilling in onto this wall behind our actress. 
and it looked a little too cool, a little too blue. So we went ahead and put some CTO on that and it worked. It's a simple fix. All right, so you want some details on how you can win one of these Savage C stands. We talked to Savage, they're gonna be sending out two brand new C stands. So you're not gonna get our used ones and we're keeping these, we wanna keep these. So all you gotta do is make sure you like the video, you're subscribed to the Threefold channel and leave a comment on the video on why you like these C stands, why you need a C stand, uh, why you wanna win or whatever. Leave a comment about anything and we're gonna pick a winner and we're gonna announce it in the next video, which will be about a week after this one. And any of the other details for the contest will be in the description of this video. So if there's anything I missed now, and uh, so yeah, win yourself a, a Savage C-Stand. Good luck. All right, that just about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know I certainly had fun making it. If you have any questions about anything that I covered, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to check out Inlight VFX YouTube channel. They're doing some really cool stuff, really great informational breakdowns and tutorials on Blender 3D. So give them a sub, give us a sub, and we'll see you later. I'm Zach with Threefold and thanks for watching.